the path of the masters when we talk of this subject we are referring to the spiritual masters of the east who have shown that there is a path there is a way by which we can overcome the problems difficulties pains and bondages of this life it is not spiritual masters who teach us psychic phenomena who teach us psychological tricks who teach us faith healing who teach us various yogas this is not reference to such teachers the path of the masters is a reference to perfect living masters those human beings who while they are living like ordinary human beings have access to the highest experiences that are open to human consciousness who have achieved the highest realms of total awareness and having reached that point are now able to share that with others and lead the others on the same path through which they got their own enlightenment the path of the masters is the path that has been shown by all masters in all ages to the whole of humanity it is not a path meant for a particular group for a particular cult a society a religion or any particular small section of human population it is a path meant for humanity for all times it has been the same path that christ showed same path that the buddha talked of the same path that muhammad talked of the same path guru nanak talked of the same path that all the mystics masters and those who have gone within themselves have talked about there may be masters who have gone part of the way on the path others may have gone further higher up on the path still others may have reached the totality the ultimate on the path but they are all talking of the same path they are talking of a path that lies within the human being not a path that lies outside one of the characteristics of these masters is that they take us away from superstition away from ritual dogma ceremony they take us away from things that are external and make us go outside their emphasis is on going within their main message is the kingdom of god your own reality god himself your creator and you yourself are all within yourself if you want to fi- find the truth if you want to find reality go within yourself that is the way that is the path that is what they emphasize they do not lay down any new norms of religious belief they do not lay down any new rituals or ceremonies they do not say thou shalt not and thou shalt they tell us simple ways by which we can control our mind control these energies that take us outside and go within their method is very simple they tell us that in reality our inner being our creator our total consciousness is the same thing as love when we experience love outside we are experiencing something from our inner self and therefore love is the way and love is the path that can take us back to reality they do not come to found religions the masters have never founded any religions look at the history of religions and we find religions have been set up long after the masters have left in their physical bodies the masters gave a simple message when they leave we not having been able to attain the levels of their spirituality the levels of their consciousness we set up external organizations and we call them religions and we bind ourselves in those religious beliefs in the religious doctrines the religious dogma religious rituals and ceremonies and become external minded thereby losing the very spirit of the path they have shown to us the path of the masters is a simple one it is a path to inward knowledge realization enlightenment the masters come and transform us they are not like the philosopher stone that makes lead into gold they are like a special philosopher stone that makes lead into the philosopher stone they do not come to make human beings better human beings 
they come to make human beings like themselves, like the masters. The way of the masters is a unique way because they do not come to teach us from a pulpit. They do not come to teach us from a pedestal. They do not come and sit on a high throne and from there preach to the others. They do not come as preachers. They come as masters. They come to share and their method is love and their method is sharing. They are sometimes mistaken to be very ordinary persons. They look like ordinary persons. They live like ordinary persons. They behave like ordinary persons. Mm -hmm. They get sick, they get well, they take food, they get um, hungry, they get appetite, they live just like us. They become so human that unless one is really ready to meet one's master, one will mistake them to be just like any other ordinary person. Why should these highly enlightened people who have reached inner awareness, who have got high levels of consciousness, why should they behave so ordinary? Why is it necessary for them to submit to the laws of ordinariness in the same way like we have to do? What is so special about being ordinary? This is a question very frequently asked in spiritual science. And the masters tell us, it is necessary for them to be ordinary so that we can experience the love they bring for us. If they sat on a pedestal as extraordinary beings, if they were not ordinary, but only extraordinary beings sitting high on top of a pedestal, we could worship them, we could be in awe of them, we could be inspired by them, but we could not love them. Love is a strange experience reserved for ordinary people. Love is the experience we have between ordinary people. That is why since they teach their message, they teach their awareness, they share their happiness and joy through love. Therefore, they become utterly ordinary so that we can assimilate their message through love. Supposing a master were to come with extraordinary powers and he was to show that he was beyond us, that he was more enlightened, that he was not like us. He wore special kind of clothes. He wore special kind of appearance and he could fly up in the sky or he could come and be in this, in this place walking three feet, four feet above in the air. If he came like this uh, in that form to teach us, we would not experience any love for such a person. You can imagine yourself, if you saw such a person, what kind of feeling will you have? It may be feeling of fear, feeling of disbelief, feeling of doubt, there must be some trick in what he is doing, feeling of awe, even feeling of worship and reverence, but not a feeling of love. If on the other hand, such a person, while walking like this, were to drop down on the ground like an ordinary person, we would run up to pick up that person and say, oh sorry, are you hurt? And even while saying that, are you hurt? The feelings of love would be aroused in our heart. One can take a lot of examples to show that love is an experience that relates entirely to ordinariness of human beings. And if the human beings are not ordinary, the feeling of love is replaced by other feelings, which in any case are being created by religion, by dogma, by doctrine, by organization, by institutions, all the time. Therefore, the path of the masters is different from all these institutions. The masters give their joy, enlightenment, wisdom to us through love and not through preaching and dogma. But what is the path of the masters? What do they have to tell us? Their message is, we are trapped in this physical system. This physical life which we are leading is not the best life we can lead. This physical world we think is our home is not our real home. That this physical world has trapped us. That we can't get out of it. That we are becoming responsible and accountable for our actions by the process of mental decision making. By taking on the responsibility through our ego and through our so-called free will, we are creating action and reaction. We are creating karma, which is the same as action and reaction, 
which keeps us going round and round in circles. We are trapped in this game of doing something and then being done in, of hitting somebody and then being hit back, of pleasing somebody and then being rewarded. Just to get all this experience, we go round and round in this great merry-go-round called the physical universe and the physical world. We are trapped in this physical life and we do not know how to get out of it. The more effort we make to get out of it, the more we get trapped in the effort-making process, which is the same process of free will, which again brings us back to reward our effort. Somebody wants to do good deeds, to be a good person, to get out of this prison house. One remains in the prison house and gets good reward, just moves to a better location, to a better life. The masters come and tell us, this physical world, which we are constantly trying to make our own home, which we are constantly trying to enjoy as if this is the be-all and end-all of life, this physical life is a trap. Try and get out of it. And there is a door which can lead you out of this. And that door is within you. They point out the way that the way is not outside. It is within you. It is in the center of consciousness. It is not outside in the things that consciousness is aware of. It is in the very being of consciousness. It is within. Therefore, if one wants to go out of this trap and escape from the prison, the route for escape is within oneself in consciousness. Behind the eyes, from where our consciousness is operating, from where we become aware of all things, from where when we open our eyes, we look outside, from where when we open our ears, we hear outside, from where through all the nine apertures on the body, we make contact with the outside world. That inside, consciousness inside us, is the key where the door can open to a way that takes us out of this trap, out of this prison house of the physical universe. The perfect masters who come and give us this teaching, not only give us a doctrinaire lesson and leave us to follow, they say, let us go out together. Let us go on the path together. This is one of the uniqueness of the perfect masters who have taught this method of escape from the physical prison house, that they have never left the disciple alone to escape. They have always made it into a great venture, a venture outside the prison into freedom that is available to consciousness outside the physical system. The masters say, if we are trapped outside in this physical universe, what is the trapping that is keeping us here? And they point out that our desires have taken our attention out of our own inner self to the outside world. Through the sense apparatus, through the sense perceptions, we are constantly being guided outside and we get attached to the things and the people of this physical world outside. And these attachments then make it very difficult for us to pull our attention back to behind the eyes within ourselves at the eye center. The place behind the eyes, inside the head, from where consciousness seems to emanate, is very important in the path of the masters. The path says, go within. Within where? Within the body? Within the system that we call awareness, consciousness? When we actually, in practice, try to go within consciousness, we find that the real place where consciousness operates from is a point behind the eyes in the wakeful state. And if we could withdraw our attention and put it back at that point behind the eyes, that is what is meant by opening a door within and shutting the doors that take our attention outside. This point behind the eyes in the center of the head has been referred to as the third eye center, as the center, as the door within, as the tenth door, as the door that, when knocked, opens to a higher world, as the door that opens into the kingdom of heaven, as the door that opens into our real kingdom, outside from the physical kingdom which is not ours. The path of the masters is therefore designed to help seekers of truth, help seekers who want to go into reality, who want to find their creator, who, find, who want to find their own true nature and true self 
it is designed to take them by pulling the attention from the outside world behind the eyes at the third eye center and from there onwards experiencing all the different levels of higher consciousness that are potentially available to all human beings. The path of the masters is not for any particular race, any particular nationality, any particular people. It is meant for all human beings all over the world. It is meant for everybody. A child of five years and an old man of hundred years are all able to follow the path of the masters. Concentrate their attention behind the eyes, pulling it from outside, detaching from the distractions and attachments from outside, bringing it within themselves and experiencing the nature of their consciousness when detached from the attachments outside and thus finding out who they are and in turn who their creator is and what is the relationship between the creator and the self. The path of the masters is universal. It is meant for all people. And anybody who is a seeker can follow this path. The important thing on this path is to find a master. If one does not have a master, one cannot follow the path. There is no way to go on this path on one's own. Why should I make such a dogmatic statement? I make it on the basis of how we go on our own. What is meant by saying we want to go on our own? When we say we want to go on our own, we are meaning we want to go according to the mental capabilities we have by our own effort, by the effort of our ego, by using our mind, reason, logic, we want to go on our own. This way of going on our own keeps us trapped in the very thing which is the ego game of going round and round in the physical world. Whenever we make an effort and do something, we get either punished or rewarded for it. And that punishment and reward keeps us going in this very system. There is no way by which we can get over our own ego unless we can rely upon somebody who is not our own ego. Now what is that which is not our own ego? People have tried to find inspiration in nature. People have tried to say, oh, nature is my master. A bird can chirp and fly overhead and that can be my master. A little breeze coming through the wind can also be my master. Everything is my master, I can learn from everywhere. Of course one can learn from everything. One can learn about so many things, but one cannot learn how to go within. One can learn how to do all the things outside, do all the things with ego, all the things with individual effort, but not learn how to go within. When we look at all these different forms that people say can be their masters, we find all these forms are in fact a reflection of one's own mind. When a bird chirps, it says nothing except what our mind wants to believe. When we read a book, it means nothing except what our mind wants to accept. When we want to accept other forms of teachers, they are nothing but what our mind is willing to accept. Therefore, a perfect master is one who takes us out of this ego game of always trying to get on one's own. Where do we find these perfect masters? It looks like if one could find a perfect master, one's made it. The trouble is, one cannot find a perfect master. Because if one knew how to recognize a perfect master, one would not need one. Therefore, we are left with this dilemma that we need a perfect master who teaches us and instructs us on how to go within without using our own ego and yet who is not just a person who is using his own mind. And if we try to find such a person, we are following our own ego and therefore it is not a perfect master. How do we find a perfect master? We cannot find a perfect master. How does this work go on? What is the path of the masters? The answer to this question of how to find a perfect master is given in the old adage of the East which says, when the chela is ready, the guru appears. The adage does not say, when the seeker is ready, he can find a guru. It says, when the seeker is ready, the guru himself appears. When the seeker is ready, the master himself appears. 
That means the onus for appearance is on the master, not on the seeker. It is not the seeker who has to run around looking for a master. It is the master who has to run around looking for the seekers. That is why the role of a master has been likened to the role of a shepherd. It is not the sheep who have to run to look where the shepherd is. It is the shepherd who collects his sheep and takes them back home. The sheep are carefree, they run around, but the shepherd will go even long distances just to pick up one stray sheep who has gone astray. Therefore, it is the master's work to pick up the seekers. What is the seeker's job? To seek. Therefore, when the seeker is ready, the master appears. Therefore, if one really wants to find a perfect living master and follow the path of the masters, one should seek. Seek intensely. Seek sincerely. Seek with the utmost of sincerity. Seek as much as one can seek. Seek with love. Seek with emotion. Seek with passion. Seek in every form. Seek the truth. Seek reality. Seek within. In whatever way one can seek. Seek, seek, seek and you will find. When you seek, the master must appear. Imagine people are compassionate here. If they find that you cry and, and run around and want something, even they feel after a while molten in their hearts and want to do something for you. Would you think that the creator who made us would be so lacking in compassion as not to listen to the voice of the seeker? Do you think the masters who are enlightened enough and have the wisdom and the knowledge and awareness of the creator who have become one with the creator within their consciousness, they would ignore the seeking of a real seeker? No. The truth is, when the seeker takes one step, the masters take ten towards the seeker. Therefore, when we are ready and we are sincere in our seeking, the master will come and appear. How will we know that the master has come if we are seeking? Maybe the master comes and passes by. He's so ordinary. He just goes by along and we don't notice. How will we find that the master has arrived and that we are now able to get the benefit of the path of the masters? There is a strange thing in human life and that is called coincidence. It is the synchronicity of events that strikes us as unusual. In the course of our life, so many things happen and we wonder how such a thing could have happened in such a strange coincidence. This is no coincidence. This is no accident. That is the way the perfect living masters come into our life when we are ready. They come by coincidence. They create circumstances in our life that make us look for them and then they suddenly appear and we can recognize them because of the coincidence through which they appear. Coincidence is the language of God. There are only two languages spoken in this universe. The language of man, which is all the written spoken languages that we know of, and the language of God, which is spoken through coincidence and circumstance. If one wants to know what God is saying to us, look at the coincidences that happen in your life. If you want to know what we are saying to each other, Look at the thoughts that go into the head. There are only two languages. Coincidence is not an accident. It is the language of God. It is the means which is used in order to achieve that great meeting with masters that makes it possible for us to go on the path of the masters. The path of the masters is a meeting with the master through coincidence and then going within according to his instructions and escaping from the great prison house which we call this physical world. This physical world will not let us go unless we are able to find a perfect living master. When we are seekers and the perfect living master, like an ordinary person, comes into our life, he affects us by his love. He affects us by the kind of teaching he gives us, which is oriented towards going within and not going outside. He does not tell us, come out and I will show you a stone which you can worship. He does not take us to temples, stones, structures outside. He takes us to the only real temple, which is the human body, makes us go inside. He takes us to the only real creator who sits inside us behind the eyes. The path of the masters 
is the way that takes us out of this prison house. We are really lucky that even at this time, in so much of turmoil in modern society, the masters still walk about like ordinary people in our midst. And when we seek, they come and find us. Thank you.